If you watched a video I made two days ago, you'll remember we had quite an exciting discussion about the mineralization of King Island. I even went off script and made a bold claim. I bet a million bucks that we'd find gold there if given permission to dig. Well, today's video will be a thrilling follow up to that claim, and not a single shovel needed to be plunged. A subscriber sent me a link to an article from the 1870s, discovered in the Trove archives, where a child found gold on King Island. Thank you so much to the sub who did that by the way, I really do appreciate it. And it wasn't just a speck or two, it was determined sufficient in amount to render it payable. The discovery didn't really raise too many eyebrows at the time as this was 20 years into the gold rush of Victoria and no one was keen to leave the state known for the largest gold nuggets in the world to go to some random island that may or may not have a lot of payable gold on it. The purpose of today's video is to demonstrate how a background in geology can help you understand the mineralogy of a place without ever setting foot on it. And all of this is attainable with a little bit of self-study. It's a fascinating field that allows us to read the Earth's history and predict its hidden treasures. So without further ado, let's look into this discovery, where it was made, the geological processes that formed it, and how I knew gold was here to begin with. Firstly, you'll always find gold in some form where there have been tectonic collisions. This is due to hydrothermal fluids and the emplacement of mineral rich waters that percolate and solidify into quartz within the many faults and fractures in the bedrock of the slowly deforming land. In the last video on King Island we discussed the tungsten mine, but upon further reading I discovered that tin mines have also operated there. Tin is typically found in cassiterite, associated with granitic magmas. Unsurprisingly, tin is heavily associated with volcanic arcs. And if you recall, we discovered a volcanic arc on King Island, with granite outcropping as the predominant volcanic rock here. It's worth noting it's not exactly clear whether or not this granite was outcropping pre-30 million years ago. It's possible its exposure to the surface was due to the proposed rift event that I spoke about in the previous video. The volcanic arcs may have been torn apart into the V-shape that I showed on the infographics in that video unveiling a granitic basement. This granite is the magma chamber that fed the arc, only they solidified beneath the earth when this system finally shut down, and they could never accumulate enough pressure to erupt onto the surface. So here they are, ancients lying frozen in time. Now let's talk about the gold. It was first discovered on the northernmost tip of the island. This isn't surprising as the ancient granite has been exposed in a good section of it. This is the bedrock layer, so any eroded gold would sit right on top of this granitic layer, and indeed that was the case. But here's where things get even more interesting. I postulate there are two forms of gold on King Island, those of volcanic origin and those shot up through hydrothermal processes. When I say hydrothermal, I basically mean the typical quartz veins that we associate gold with. The proper term for this type of deposition is known as orogenic gold deposits. These veins were emplaced into the bedrock during the subduction events and the subsequent mountain building episodes. On the other hand, volcanic gold is tiny to microscopic, but present, sometimes in payable quantities. It tends to be lower yielding though, with ore generally yielding a few grams to the ton of crushed ore versus the half an ounce to an ounce one would hope to obtain from hydrothermal veins. However, this is only sometimes true and highly concentrated volcanic gold deposits exist, generally as a result of re-enrichment processes. Gold is usually found alongside a host of other metals in volcanic ore, such as copper, silver, lead, etc. Hydrothermal veins may have a mixture too, but their overall composition is less diverse and more focused so to speak. There have been two gold bearing veins discovered on King Island that I've read about. I've only found three articles on this subject, but prospecting licenses were indeed taken out. It's yet to be known what work was done though. There's both alluvial and hard rock work that's been conducted, but I'm unsure of the extent and I'd only really be able to ascertain it if I personally stepped foot on King Island. The first gold bearing load was the one discovered with the initial discovery. A boy found gold while out kangarooing. The reef itself was 12 feet or 3.6 meters thick, and it ran quite a distance, venturing out into the sea and beyond reach after that point. We'd also have some very interesting mineralogy occurring here because of the limestone hills that make up many sections of King Island. Carbonate gossens are strange and fascinating. They're a subject I have yet to have the opportunity to explore much because of their lack of existence in the areas that I've lived. 
I might have to go to King Island after all, because carbonates can host a variety of mineral deposits. Lead, zinc, copper, gold, iron, fluorite, phosphite, barite, rare earth elements, and even radioactive minerals, which I'd prefer to stay the hell away from. In the article, the texture of the gold is mentioned. It's said to be flat and very worn, appearing as though it had been conveyed a considerable distance. This line is sticking out to me like a sore thumb, and I'm going to ponder it in the coming days to understand it more. I know that this gold is very ancient and was deposited eons ago, but this description of it appearing to have been conveyed a considerable distance seems to be something important to me that I need to keep in mind for a later date to better understand the geological history of King Island. The fellows who made this discovery took three weeks to find their first speck of gold, and as usual, they did so right as they were about to leave. The typical prospector's luck. But I hope this piques the interest of prospectors out there to attempt to understand more about geology because it really is the pinnacle for discovering mineral deposits, among so many other things. Geology has single-handedly changed and enriched my life in so many ways, from altering how I view the world to helping me make discoveries or have an eye for identifying potential findings when they're present. In a coming episode, I'm going to introduce you to something I like to call hidden volcanoes of which I've found a few on King Island. I hope you've enjoyed this exploration of King Island's geological history and the fascinating world of mineral deposits here. Remember, every rock has a story to tell. You can uncover these stories and make incredible discoveries with some knowledge and curiosity. You'd be amazed at how many people walk past seemingly ordinary, boring looking rocks only for some nerd like me to come along, pick it up, and stare at it intently for an uncomfortably long duration before deducing potential value and making a discovery. Recent history is filled with stories of discoveries that were made this way, and I've personally made at least two discoveries in my lifetime in highly explored areas that, for whatever reason, overlooked something that stuck out to me. So keep exploring folks and remain curious and hungry for knowledge. Discovery is still out there for those determined enough to seek it. Even if it's done in a toilet stall on your phone whilst going number two, it's still a discovery nonetheless. And when you hit flush, you can do so with added satisfaction. Thanks for watching.